Good morning, everyone. A very warm welcome to you all as we join together on this Christmas morning to celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are going now to sing uh, at home, that is. Um, we are still only able to listen here in church, but our first Christmas carol is O Come, All Ye Faithful. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. Let us pray. Our gracious God, it is a great joy to be able to celebrate on this Christmas morning. We are all full of excitement and we are glad that we have joy to share. We thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, your gift of your Son to the world. We thank you for the gifts of the wise men to the baby Jesus. We thank you for the gifts that we share with one another. We thank you too that we are part of the family of the Church of Jesus Christ, and we are grateful that every one of us is welcome. We ask that you will bless our time together this Christmas day, 
as we sing together the Christmas carols, as we hear again the Christmas story, and as we share together the warmth of our personalities, our acceptance of one another, and shared love among us. Lord, hear our prayer. In the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We are now going to hear our Scripture reading, and I'm going to invite Katie, who's going to read for us. She's going to read from Isaiah and also from the Gospel of Matthew. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 to 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters are carried in the arm. Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. The wealth from the seas will be brought to you. To you the riches of the nation will come. Herds of camels will cover your lands, young camels of Midian and Ephah. And all from Sheba will come, bearing golden incense and proclaiming the praise of the Lord. The Gospel reading is from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all of Jerusalem with him. When he had called together, all the people's chief, priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written, but you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make us careful search for this child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother. Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And be, have been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. We're now going to sing, that is, if you're at home, um, you will be at home because there's nobody here in church on this pre-recorded Christmas Day service. But Christmas wouldn't be quite the same without our next carol. It is Away in a Manger. Stop. 
I'd like to share very briefly this Christmas Day. I want to share with you the story of the three wise men. Some people uh, have considered them to be kings. I don't think they were kings at all. I think they were three very knowledgeable individuals. Now, mythically or historically, I'm not sure which, but they've been given names. One is Caspar, Melchior, and Balthazar. Now, whether that was their name or not, I'm not entirely sure. All we know is that from the records in the Bible that there came wise men from the east. Now, maybe there was even more than three. I think we've got the number three because of the three gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But anyway, we often uh, don't hear a great deal about these wise men, but I want to perhaps have a look very briefly, as I say, today. Now, the wise men um, came from the east, and there was a caste of people from Persia who were very, very skilled in medicine and in philosophy and in astronomy. That is the interpretation of the stars, quite distinct from astronomy. Astrology and astronomy are not the same thing. Now, they belonged to the Persian Empire, and they, their leader at that time, there was a, per, a person by the name of Zoroaster, who was a Persian uh, who lived about a thousand years before the birth of Jesus. And in essence, his teachings were to do good and not to do evil. So, these wise men came looking for a king. The stars told them that somewhere, in some place, there was to be a king born. Now, the people of that time, uh, and in some ways not any different from today, some people get this belief that their fate is tied up in the movement of the celestial beings, that is, the stars. Some people won't make decisions unless they've consulted their horoscope. It's big business, is astrology. Now, what actually happened at the time of Jesus? We've got on our tree here the star. We've got around the church uh, stars which decorate the church at this time of year. In fact, stars are very, very prominent at this time of year because we, we know of that from the gospel. Now, we do know scientifically that stars just don't move around and stop over a stable or anywhere else for that matter. But what did happen, happened, and it was the birth of Jesus Christ. Now, here sometimes at this time we venture into the differences between science eh, and theology almost as if the two are opposites. Faith and science, science and religion, they're not always at odds. One can complement the other. Now, there are several theories abound as, as to what actually happened at the time. And let me suggest just a couple. As I say, we're having a quite different look eh, at the birth of Jesus from the perspective of the wise men. Well, there are several theories about what happened. Some people think that it was a comet or that the, the appearance of what looked like a star, in actual fact, was a configuration of planets and stars, or an eclipse of some sort or other. Whatever it was that happened, whatever it was that happened, and however it might be explained scientifically, the one thing as far as the wise men were concerned was this, that what happened was the announcement of the birth of a king. And that's what I want us to think about today. Don't want to dismiss the science at all. In fact, if anything, we want to embrace the science. We want to embrace the scientific knowledge. It was the announcement of a king. That was the important thing. Now, what is the significance of this? Well, I've been using a phrase that I've used many, many times in many, many sermons that we have in Jesus Christ the God of history. Jesus was born at a place and at a time. And we know that because of other people who were involved at the time. Quirinius, he was a governor. There was a census. And Mary and Joseph went 
to be counted, as one child put it, as they aptly put it for the census, they went to be counted each to their hometown. That's the God of history. The God of mystery is that we don't know all the facts and all the whys and the wherefores, yet we know that Jesus was born. That's the history, that Jesus, there are things that we don't know about him, and there's a real sense of the unknowable. That's the Jesus of mystery. And on this Christmas Day, I want to finish with this, the Jesus of majesty, that God in Christ became a human being. That's what the whole Christmas story is about, the incarnation. Can we explain it? No, we can't. Can we try and explain it? Yes, we can try. Will we ever explain it? I don't know. But what I do know is this, that God in Christ is alive forevermore, and it's His birth that we celebrate on this very special day. Jesus, Jesus of history, Jesus of mystery, and Jesus of majesty. Our thanks be to God for our thoughts and meditations from His holy word. Amen. Now let us pray. Lord God, our Father, we ask You to bless all the little children today whose lives are gladdened in the safety and comfort of loving homes. And we pray also for little children who have very little or nothing of home comforts or loving parents. We pray for vulnerable young people far away from home, living on the streets, separated, lonely, and afraid. We pray for old people who on this day remember their childhood days, but are now frail, immobile, and lonely. Be near to them and to all who bring them comfort and reassurance. We pray for our world with all its happiness, yet too with its places of unhappiness, turmoil, and division. And may each of us do what we can to be the answer to our own prayers, and in seeking to be people who not only love peace, but people who also want to make peace. We thank you for Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, and it is in his name that we pray. Amen. We are now going to hear, and if you're at home, as you no doubt are, to sing our final hymn, While Humble Shepherds Watched Their Flocks.
we have enjoyed being together on this Christmas Day, being together via our live link, and it is good that we have celebrated once again Christmas Day. Go now in peace, and may the blessing of God Almighty be with you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.